Welcome back, everyone, to Grand Tactician the Civil War. It is March of 1862. I actually have all of the patrons' uh, units completed, uh, except for two brigades. Uh, I'm waiting to hear back from you about some information I need because the request you made is not able to be fulfilled based on the information you gave me. Uh, so as soon as those two are fulfilled, I'll have everybody recruited and I will make a special patron video for you guys so you can see exactly where you are in the order of battle. I may yet change some things though because we just have five uh, active field armies and I may need to separate those out a little more to give myself a little more flexibility. And I've renamed the Army of the Hudson as the Army of the Kanawha. It just makes more sense because they're operating in West Virginia uh, to name them after a West Virginia river rather than the place where they started which was up near new york city in the hudson river we're about to take wheeling west virginia which is only like an hour from my house it's hard for me to believe that once upon a time virginia was that close to where i live but it is it's absolutely true with this panhandle here all right we've taken that now we're going to go ahead and send these guys down to charleston oh their readiness is in such a state that we can't do it okay uh, so here's what we got as far as field manpower goes, 262,000, but remember that includes all of our garrisons, which are pretty heavily manned right now. So we're going to have to rely a lot on Navy uh, for things, which we have a lot of Navy being built, but we have a lot more available shipyard space. So I think I'm probably going to have to queue up some more ships. The Army of the Northwest is sitting down here at the end of the Shenandoah Valley. So we've got the First Corps under Hooker headed in that direction it's actually going to be a pretty even fight and hooker's not in the best of supply situations right now so that's obviously something we're going to have to deal with but i'd kind of like to grab this supply depot here in stanton virginia i believe it is pronounced stanton despite the fact that it looks like staunton it's going to take 12 hours for those orders to get there we're going to keep the first or the second and third corps sitting here in the fredericksburg area there's a hospital right there which we actually hold the rapidan bridge hospital we're still dealing with winter movement, despite the fact it's late March. I guess technically that's still kind of winter. We'll see what happens with that fight there. All right, they're in the end of the action. We do have an advantage in numbers, but it's not a huge advantage, and we have a bit of a disadvantage in supply. So let's see how this goes. So the first corps is kind of interesting at the moment because uh, we're, we're actually waiting for some more units to be recruited into the first division so they're not all here yet second division has got four brigades first division's only got two and then we have our artillery our replacement depot uh, unit does not count so we actually have about 2500 fewer men than it shows uh, on the strength measure so we're actually pretty well dead even uh, in terms of strength so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out it's a meeting engagement which means we're both kind of meeting in the middle uh, the objective is way the heck over here in this corner, so that's going to be interesting. We're going to send Custer ahead with the cavalry uh, to try and scout this out. But first things first, I want to give him an evade order, which means he's not going to uh, go in and start fighting right off the bat. But I'll go ahead and move my divisions up about as far as here, because I don't expect him to advance much past the objective. But I think he will get there first. Well, interestingly, he has not grabbed the objective. We're getting close to the end of the day, uh, and we're going to get Custer up there. I'd really like to try and get my infantry up there too, but I just don't think we're going to make it before we run out of time. Yeah, there it is. So we're going to actually have two separate spots here now because we're going to have our cavalry. Oh, it redeployed the cavalry back, and he's going to dig in over here. That's pretty interesting. I was too far spread out between my cavalry and the rest of my troops, so it actually created two separate spots for deployment. So we're going to try to move everybody up here as best we can. So now with his redeployment, he has taken the objective, so I was just a little too slow in getting there. So now we are going to have to attack him, but the good news is he's no longer in fortifications. So uh, let's start moving up there. Oh, the the artillery is going to be a nightmare because there's just nowhere good to deploy it. Too many woods and things like that. We've got Custer right here with the 5th Michigan Cav. Um, and he's got guns right out in front. We're going to bring our other division in on this side. We're going to try to hit his right flank. Kind of swing them around as best I can. 
Okay, we're going to move pretty quickly here because I don't want to give him time to readjust his lines. I want to be able to make this happen pretty quick. So uh, the first two looks like Robert Buchanan's Pennsylvania Dutch Brigade and uh, Colonel George Meade's Philly Owens Brigade are going to get there first. Let's make sure they have long range. Meade's got... Oh, we still have a unit with Springfield Muskets. we got to get them upgraded. I thought I had everybody upgrade already. I guess not. All right, so he's starting to adjust here. We're going to start moving Eli Long's 1st Division forward so we can hold him over here and don't really give him a chance to do that. I don't think any of this artillery is really going to have a chance to do much. All right, Meade has opened fire. We're waiting for the other two brigades to get in there. They're a little winded right now. It's the Ruhr Valley Brigade and the 95th Rifles. Eventually we'll get them some better weapons. A unit like the 95th Rifles needs to probably have Enfields. Maybe even some Whitworths when we get them. These guys with their muskets just aren't in range. I'm going to send some skirmishers forward if I can. Try and help out. All right, here goes Eli Long moving forward. He'll try to hold these two brigades here. He's he's a bit bunched up right now because I hit him on the flank before he was really in a position to do much about it. So I think that's going to work out nicely for us. River Valley Brigade is a bit winded. So are the 95th Rifles. Speed things up a little bit for the time being. You got Buchanan's skirmisher detachment up here keeping these guys a little bit busy on their flank. All right, River Valley Brigade under Erasmus Keys. They've begun to open up. I'm going to move them a little further forward. They're just not quite in range where I'd like them to be. Same with the 95th Rifles. Let's try to get them in and around. Although he's got some cav back here that he might try to use for this attack that I'm using on him. All right, looks like we broke one already. Beautiful. Pretty low casualties so far. We just grabbed the objective. All right, our skirmishers from these two units have begun to get engaged. I'm going to hold Custer's cab back just in case I need them for any spot where he might get an advantage. Pull these skirmishers back. And then advance Buchanan forward with this whole brigade. Here comes the cab. Against Rear Valley. Meade's going to turn to face that threat. Put some fire into their flanks. Alright, you guys got to pull your skirmishers in. After you start firing long range. This is the 7th New Hampshire and the Connecticut Tobacco Valley Brigade. First combat for both of those units. Augustine Rifles for the 7th New Hampshire. Lawrence's for the Connecticut uh, Tobacco Valley Brigade. Alright, pull your skirmishers in since they're behind you anyway. And now we have fire all the way along the line. He's bunched up, so he's going to have a hard time, I think. Artillery is completely useless. Let's pull Custer up a little closer. All right, boys, let's see how these new weapons operate. Oh, they're doing great. Casualties were, it was like two something for me and four something for him few minutes ago. Now it's 1100 for him. I think we're seeing the superiority of my weapons at the moment. Which I'm going to need because as I've said, it, it seems now like I've got a nice big advantage in numbers, but it's not going to stay that way. And I have the disadvantage of having to attack into his territory, build supply lines, things like that. So I'm going to get stretched pretty thin as this war goes along. Move these guys up a little further. That's why I'm going to have to keep building 
supply depots and forts as I move south, and that's going to take time. It's going to be a slow process. So even though I'm winning battle after battle, that doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot of money. Alright, we're looking good. Everybody's in good shape. Nobody suffered significant casualties. Meads lost 126 men. That's about the worst for anybody at the moment. Rear Valley Brigade is exhausted. They had the furthest to, mer to march that our left flank did, so our right side's a little more fresh. We're just going to keep shooting this out. The nice thing is he doesn't have the effectiveness of his artillery. So just as ours isn't doing anything, neither is his. Alright, we'll go ahead and move the keys forward a little bit. We'll just shoot it out. We, uh, we have the advantage of better weapons, so I have no problem with shooting this out. You can see we're not, we're not losing any men over here because he's, he's not in range. He's going to have to close the range. I'm really not sure why he's not doing anything. He's just sitting here and taking it. He's going to make the casualties pretty one-sided. He's going to have to start getting some rifled weapons. Look at that. Because he just he can't hit me. Over here, a little bit he is. And that's why we're taking some casualties. But we're not taking a single casualty on this side because he just isn't in range to fire. It's pretty fascinating that he's not doing something to change that situation. Yeah, he'll break before too long. Let's just go ahead and speed it along. I've never seen him, like, not do anything to move. To just sit there like that. And take it. There, now, he, now he's moving. He finally figured it out. It's time to pull out. Superior weapons, big time, in that battle made the difference. Which is nice, because a couple of months ago, I didn't have that. Okay, so let's take a look and see who we can credit for this victory. 10 to 1 on the casualties. Second Division inflicts most of them. Uh, pretty spread out. Look at that. Philly Owns Brigade, that's uh, Meade, uh, inflicted 800 casualties. Uh, 95th Rifles, River Valley, Pennsylvania Dutch all did their fair share. Uh, and then let's go over here. These were only two brigades, and they, I mean, honestly, that's about as even as I've ever seen it. Uh, pretty much every single line infantry brigade of the 6th did their fair share in that one. There was no more, you know, significantly more. I mean, maybe Meade, and he was right in the center. He also took the most casualties. But everybody did their part that time. Glorious victory at Stanton. General Hooker becomes a national hero. All right, let's go in for a second because here's what I want to do. I want to take a look at uh, General Hooker's first corps there. You see he does have... Uh, why are the 95th rifles showing at... Wait, that's kind of weird. We shouldn't have two 95th rifles here. Not entirely what happened, but sure, sure what happened with that. But uh, we'll delete that one, and we're actually going to transfer these guys over to that one to make these divisions a little more even. Uh, but here's what I want to do now. Number one, uh, I want to go in and find Mead. There he is there. Uh, we're going to give him a promotion to uh, Brigadier General for his performance there. Hooker's already a major general, so there's nothing we can really do for him. Um, though Dan Butterfield, let's go ahead and promote him to major general for his performance. Dan Butterfield, a Medal of Honor recipient, I think I mentioned that, wrote taps. Um, actually wrote a lot of bugle calls. He was originally the brigade commander for the brigade that included the 20th Maine, uh, historically speaking anyway. Uh, Eli Long did pretty good too, but I don't think we'll promote him quite yet. And I'm not entirely sure about these brigade commanders, but we'll see how they do. 
I'm going to take a look at the railroads for just a minute, see if there's any that we have the ability to build. It doesn't look like we do. Nothing of significance anyway. There's a few that we could build, uh, but nothing that's really going to help me. The Kentucky, Covington, and Nashville one is one I would like to build, but we don't hold Bowling Green, so we're going to have to go deal with that. Uh, the Army of Alabama is right there with only 14,000 men. Uh, so we're still waiting for Orlando Wilcox to get into Nashville with his army or with his uh, 17th Corps. Let's send WHL Wallace's 13th Corps up to secure Bowling Green so we can construct that railroad and get our supply situation all the way down through to Nashville in good shape. I'll probably actually build some forts up here uh, in Bowling Green to kind of hold central Kentucky a little better. Well then, didn't see this one coming. I don't know how I missed that. But the Confederates just, oh, they went by rail. And they've actually got a third army on the way. They're sending all of their Central Virginia forces at the First Corps. Uh, so actually, I've got the opportunity here to withdraw. He outnumbers me pretty substantially. I mean, I have that advantage with the, the weapons, but ah, I don't think I want to do that. Here's what we're going to do. Both of these corps are in really good shape. So how about we withdraw the first corps, and then we say, hey, while you're at that, I'm going to march on Richmond. And we'll draw him into a fight. Now... I was trying to build some supply depots here on that side of the Rappahannock River near Fredericksburg, but that's going to have to be put on hold here for just a minute as we try to figure out what we want to do here. I, I probably could have sent one of those corps just to go down and relieve Hooker, but I don't know where Hooker's going to go at the moment. But he's about to figure out that while he's doing that, I'm making a move. I don't know if I, if I hold the Army of the Potomac headquarters there, I can probably continue to build these supply depots. I don't know how that works exactly. All right, the South has Industrialization II policy enacted. It's April 1st, so that means we should have a new intelligence report. Uh, so right now they're, they've completed suppressed population and trade deals. Uh, no relations with Europe to speak of. Um, they actually just completed industrialization too. Um, they've raised the Corpus Christi Squadron 2 operating near Texas. 11 new ships have been started uh, with construction. They've lost 6% uh, in the morale of their armies. Yeah, we kind of knew that already. And Richmond's about to fall. So he, he went after the First Corps with three armies and left his capital. Actually, it's not his capital, is it? Uh, that's right. Richmond is not the capital. The capital is Montgomery, Alabama, I believe. Which was originally the Confederate capital. So, it uh, looks like we've completed our legal blockade policy. Alright, I think the next thing I want to work on is going to be breadbasket. I want to get a little more in the way of agriculture going so we can make sure we're, we're able to feed our armies. Uh, all right, uh, I want to check over here real quick. The 13th Corps has uh, taken Bowling Green, but now the Army of Alabama is moving northeast, uh, which makes them the responsibility of General McClellan, who I'm going to move down here into the Lexington area and see if we can't draw these two Confederate armies in this direction. Uh, in the meantime, 13th Corps, let's build a fort right there to help hold central Kentucky. You can see now that it looks like the Army of Northern Virginia, which is actually a 4,400 man force operating in central West Virginia, uh, is moving to help support what's happening over here. Virginia Military Institute is owned by the Union right now. That's kind of cool. I like that. Uh, First Corps kind of stuck there at the moment though. Um, we have taken Richmond. 
And it looks like the construction is continuing on these supply depots, though they may not be necessary at this point since we've now taken Richmond and we can actually be supplied by the peninsula because we own Fort Monroe. Uh, we've got a blockade squadron down there. I don't think I can get at the James River squadron, but I'm going to try. I'm going to bring the flying flotilla down too. All right, we're going to subsidize industry which uh, gives us a 5% boost to industrial uh, productivity right now. Um, you can see his numbers are starting to climb. Mine are pretty well maxed out. I do want to look at the Navy for just a second and see where we're at with all of that, as well as weapons, because we might have some new weapons available. We've got some ships in our various harbors. I'm going to add the USS Potomac to the Flying Flotilla. Um, I actually want to add a few... This is a sea and river movement fleet. I want to add some gunboats to them. So we're going to build three new gunboats for the Flying Flotilla. Uh, I'm going to start sending the second corps to the west. We need to break through to the uh, to the first corps and get them some help. They're, they're at 46% supplies. They're low on food. Uh, they're going to start suffering some major attrition if we don't get there and help them out. All right, we won a naval victory. The enemy fleet thoroughly whipped three ships have been sunk and three captured beautiful so we basically disintegrated the james river squadron that was there um got 119 guns i don't know that that's enough to be dealing with something like fort norfolk but we're going to go after them if we can all right first corps is going to deal with the army of the potomac and an unknown unit which will arrive in 11 hours uh, we did not get our reinforcements there in time. Now, again, I could withdraw here, and I think I might, just because the second corps is on the way. Uh, and that's going to allow us to kind of even the odds a little bit. Let's give first corps flying column, which gives them maximum supplies 50%. They're down to 35% supplies. But we're going to get there with some help here very soon. Who arrived at their destination? Hooker Ward McClellan. Okay, let's take a look at him real quick. Where is the enemy? The Army of, the, of Alabama has moved south now. All right, Army of the Northwest. It's going to hit the second core of the Army of the Potomac. We've got a big advantage here. Let's fight that battle. Three objectives on the map this time over around Appomattox Station. Right in here. So he's coming in from this side, so we can expect, expect him to be well entrenched and defended in that spot so we'll move cautiously into position and see what happens still advancing still no sign of the enemy i have to believe he's dug in along these objectives here uh, so we're going to go ahead and grab the first one we're going to run out of daylight here before long although we are into april now so we might get a little bit more uh, but we'll basically be deploying for an attack in the morning at this point so we'll just keep moving everybody up just to let you know uh, who we've got in this fight. Uh, we do have a replacement depot here. So about 6,000 men are not a part of this. 1st Division, 2nd Corps, Salem Cadets, Lost Shoes Infantry, and the Iron Brigade. 2nd uh, Division, 2nd Corps, 1st Minnesota, New York Lead Launchers, uh, 13th Demon Dogs, Fighting 5th. Uh, third Division so far just have the ha Hammond Support Rifles. There are other units that have been recruited that just haven't arrived yet. Artillery Division has the 1st Division batteries. The, uh, our Italian boys here, the Valois Regimento Ar uh, Artillera. Probably butchered that, I apologize. And then the 9th Battery. And then we've got the Battle River Rascals uh, and Doyle's Dragoons that are attached directly to Wallace's Corps Headquarters. All right, we're deployed for Day 2. And it looks like he's dug in somewhere back here. So honestly, oh, there they are. Honestly, we can just kind of move forward, take these other objectives, and then sit tight and let him attack me. I have no reason to attack that position. I have two of the three objectives. So we'll just push forward a little bit. Got this railroad in the way here. That's going to make things a little more challenging. Ah, Dana, just sit tight right there. We've got our artillery here. Uh, let's see, howitzers, howitzers, Napoleons. I need this three-inch ordnance to start focusing on counter-battery fire. 
once we get them moved into position. Once everybody's moved into position, I'm gonna deploy my skirmishers and then I'm just gonna sit tight. Okay, well he uh, just out of nowhere, as I was trying to get my artillery into position as I was sitting here and he was doing nothing, just out of nowhere, his entire army started moving forward all at once. Uh, so we're actually going to have to pull these guys back. I was trying to get the Battle River Rascals set up to where we could start doing some counter battery fire since he wasn't moving, but now he's moving. So uh, we're going to do that. We're going to pull them back. He's starting to send skirmishers forward. We have all three objectives, though. He'll probably grab this one back here in just a minute. I think he's going to try to get out around my flank. So we'll send Doyle's Dragoons here to cover that flank. Skirmishers are engaged. Right here near Appomattox Station. See how we do. Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain's skirmishers from the 13th Demon Dogs. We are showing with already about 200 casualties. That was something we kind of carried into the battle. Doesn't really reflect what's happening on the ground at the moment. He sent forth a couple of brigades, uh, so I've got my skirmishers up here fighting on the railroad. Engaging them, I'm going to move these guys forward just a little bit, but they're engaged as well. But really, that's about all this is right now, is a skirmisher fight. Chamberlain's guys are low on ammo, so they're going to have to pull back here in a minute. Still waiting to see what he does. It's probably going to be the next day, though. We're going to hit the end of the day here soon. He'll probably redeploy. I may shift my forces and anchor in along this railroad now that I've got these objectives. Might even build some fortifications if I can. All right, we're on to the next day. Uh, I am digging in along the railroad, although it was really limiting where I could deploy on this side, so couldn't quite get to the railroad. Main thing right now is I need to pull my skirmishers in so I can get my main guys on the line. I need to move up and deal with that battery. And then we need to push these guys out of here so we can dig in behind the railroad a little better. And then hopefully we can start getting the artillery actually doing something here. Looks like Ayers' battery is able to fire with his Napoleons. I'm going to send the Hammond Sport rifles forward to deal with this battery here. They've got mixed, right, mixed muskets. We've got to deal with that. We have available weapons. Salem cadets still have Springfield muskets too, so the second core definitely needs their weapons upgraded, as we have now discovered. We've got muskets here too. Jeez. Muskets, muskets. I thought I went through and checked everybody and got their rep weapons upgrade. I have obviously failed miserably in that department. All right, Hammond's port rifles. We've got to deal with this battery, hopefully quickly. They've only got five guns, so that helps. Casualty's pretty even, which favors me, because I've got a significant manpower advantage in this battle, plus I hold the objectives. Now we're going to get Doyle's Dragoons dismounted and up against the railroad to start fighting. They, they get a cover bonus from the railroad embankment. I don't want to charge the guns just because there's only five of them and it will pull me out of position. If there were more of them, I would charge them just because I'd be worried about them doing pretty significant damage, which they're still kind of doing. But I think we'll be okay here. Okay, we got to get the rest of these guys up against the embankment now. 
sure what's going on with the Lost Shoes infantry. Uh, he's starting to shift this way now. Ah, uh, Burbank broke. I should have charged the guns. Alright, lesson learned. Definitely should have charged the guns. Let's see if we can rally these guys. Ah, what a mess. Okay. Here's what we're going to do then. Do Rusty. Mount up. Hit him. Before they start getting into another brigade. Only five guns. I really did not expect them to do that much damage. Oh, are you tell. Oh, he's got. Ah, it's my fault. I had an evade order on him from when we were scouting. I might not get a second crack at that apple. Because he's got to go right into crossfire and charge back into those guns again, which are now turned on him. Yeah, he broke. Darn it. Okay. Plan B. Send Scammon forward with his division and let's try to smash this line. I was hoping I could just hold the line here, let him come at me, but that's not going to happen now. They're firing, they're idle. Ah, they're just not in a good spot. They don't have any kind of line of sight. Let's see if we can pull them back this way. Alright, Scammon, get up there. I've got the numbers, I've got to start using them. How's Churchill doing? He's doing okay. Despite the fact he's only got muskets. Lost Shoes Infantry doing okay. Let's give everybody a long range even though they don't have the best weapons for that. Skirmishers. We're gonna have to move forward from the railroad here. I'm a little worried about Salem Cadets. They've lost 400 men because they're out there on that flank. going to target this battery and wipe it out as quickly as I can. What are you doing? No, 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 no. Pull back. Looks like he's pulling back. I guess we got him. Okay. Wow. That wasn't pretty. Let's take a look at the combat report. Nice job by the 1st Division, 2nd Corps, specifically Lost Shoes Infantry. Fantastic job, inflicting 1,300 casualties while only taking 134. That's the power of having those Springfield rifle muskets when the units around them, at least on this side, only had muskets. Shows you the power of good weapons. Final numbers, 1,500 casualties for me, 3,100 for Pendleton's Army of the Northwest. Uh, the good news is, is that is the beginning process of breaking through to Hooker's First Corps and reconnecting with them. And hopefully now we can start to put a hold on the state of Virginia, which doesn't hold quite the same value since Richmond isn't the capital in this version. Uh, which was a real possibility that could have happened historically, so it's not that big of a stretch. And it always made me wonder why they would move it to Richmond, being so close to the north, but uh, there were a lot of other reasons why they did that. 
So we'll put a uh, foothold on Virginia. It's going to be, it's kind of interesting because in my last Confederate playthrough, Virginia was the one place I had a really hard time holding on to as the Confederacy. And it seems like that's going to be the case for him too. So um, second core, before we do anything else, we're going to go in right now, look at Wallace's second core and get those weapons upgraded, not for the replacement depot, but for the other. So Salem cadets, uh, I think right now all we have available are Springfield muskets or uh, Springfield rifled muskets because uh, everything else is currently on order. Uh, yeah, Lawrence is being ordered. Enfield's being ordered. We might actually order eventually some more Springfield, but I think we're good for now. We'll just go with that. Um, where are we here? That gives Springfields to all of those guys. Uh, we can actually just hit this upgrade button. Oh, we've got some Whitworth rifles available. I didn't realize those had come in. Uh, that's actually kind of cool to give a few of those to a few units here and there. Uh, I don't want to give more than one brigade in a division those, though. Okay, they've all got Springfields now. Uh, we definitely got to get these guys. Uh, I don't want to give them Whitworths. I got a couple units that I want to give those to. The specifically requested sniper type weapons. We've actually got 25,000 Lawrences that are arriving in less than a day. So that's going to help too. I also went ahead and placed another order uh, for another small amount of those Whitworths so we can get some more of those going. Uh, he's up to 170,000 men in the field now. Uh, I am curious once we get to. Uh, May 1st to see what he researches next because I, I got to believe he's going to have to go over the draft go for the draft here pretty soon Army of the Ohio has lost sight of the Confederate Army he was pursuing it looks like they've gone up there all right Army of the Kanawha pretty even fight here with the Army of the Shenandoah where is that going to take place Winfield Scott leading an army in the field uh, up here in the northern panhandle, boy, if we lose this battle, that opens him up to go after an industrial heartland center like Pittsburgh. So uh, this is an important fight, and we're outnumbered. So the objective is this little hill out here in this open field. So uh, this one's going to be interesting because we get to defend, and we're going to have the opportunity to dig in pretty good on this one. So... Um, Basically, two divisions are what we have, the Airborne Division and the Albademi Division. We've got some decent artillery as well. Um, so we're just going to dig in right around this hill, I think. He is coming from this way. Uh, he's got a couple of different road options. He could come from over here. He could come from down here. So I think we'll kind of dig in for both. All right, we're dug in the best we can. He he could come from the left, and that would be a problem because he could get around me, but I can shift down if I need to. Um, there's also the possibility he could come down this road and try to come across the creek. That seems like a bad place to attack, but you never know what he might do. Ideally, he comes across right here and hits me over here, but I don't know that he'll do that. Sometimes as I'm waiting, I just like to look at the view from ground level. It looks really cool. As we're sitting here on this battlefield watching the clouds go over the mountains ahead. We can actually even move that out of the way and get an even better view of what's happening. Uh, waiting for sunrise. Actually, yeah, sunrise. It's only 6 in the morning here. Here comes the sun rising over and you're starting to get a little bit of it. Oh, that's really cool. I love that effect. That is awesome. We're still waiting to see if the enemy shows up and where he will show up. But that's just fun to watch. I think we need to get these guns in a slightly better position. Maybe up here on the hill a little more. You can see the sun going higher in the sky. I need to get my army commander back a little further from the front lines. Our guns are covering the area about as well as we can hope to. All right, we've caught sight of the enemy. He is going down this road. That's kind of an interesting choice to make. I don't want to completely abandon this area, though, because I'm still afraid he might show up there, too. But I've at least got to pull somebody over there. So uh, let's royal get the Royal Scots Grays and pull them back to this side. I don't know why in the world he would attack me 
across a swamp. But who knows what he's thinking. We have to prepare for that possibility. All right, first things first. Denver's second battery has opened up on them. I'm going to pull them back, though. And I'm going to pull the cab up here. Uh, and we're going to dismount and cover that spot. He is also sending men down this road here. I still am concerned about the possibility they might come down this road, but I'm going to go ahead and send the 10th Hussars over here to cover this flank too. We'll get these guys dismounted. He's already under my artillery fire, which is good. 10 pounder parrots opening up on him. A little too late, but I wish I could have shifted these guys over a bit more. Looks like his main attack's up here, so I might be safe to go ahead and start pulling some of these guys out. I'm going to dismount them, get them built in right here too. And then here comes the attack. Arctic Angels have opened up. And he's very quickly, I think, going to pull back out of here. 101st Screaming Eagles on the right with their Mississippi rifles, long range. These things have a 600 meter range, or 500 yards, I guess. Only fire two and a half rounds a minute, though. Remember, this battle is important for us because this is protecting the heartland, uh, the, the industry of places like Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Most of his army appears to be over in this direction. Let's go ahead and bring the 82nd around to get on Archer's flank. I'll keep these two brigades over there just because I still am not convinced he isn't sending somebody over that way. I don't want to get surprised. Now I think I'm going to mount the Royal Scots Greys up. Now, granted, they're going through a swamp here, but I'm going to go after this battery. Rockbridge Artillery. No, they don't actually have any guns, so they're kind of pointless. Um, how about Stewart's Cavalry with only 200 men? Let's go after them. a little more aggressive here. Yeah, he just figured out I'm coming around on his flank and he's got to pull out of there. I'm going to bring the Sky Soldiers out on their flank. Alright, 82nd, pour it into him. Get after Stuart and his 200 horsemen before the rest of these guys get down there. There we go. He's broke. Archer broke, who we're going to hit again, I think. This isn't going to turn into much of a battle, I don't think. He's too fragmented, too spread out. All right, we'll pull these guys back now. But I am going to advance out further here. I have a feeling this will end pretty quickly once we break another unit or two. All those fortifications just for me to actually end up in the open fighting. Just because of where he is. Scott's Grays, do your thing. Let's pull the Screaming Eagles out so they can start firing on Powell. We've got big advantages in numbers here. Most of 
Most of his brigades don't have a lot of men in them. Down here. Here come the big ones. Nice. Scott's Grays broke, but they did their job. I'm going to pull Runyon forward and get into Powell's flank a little bit. I want to try and break these units before his bigger units get into position. There we go. There goes Earl Van Dorn. And I think he's out. Beautiful. All right, he's moving in with a lot more of his army now. They've arrived. We were just taking on kind of the tiny advanced units. So he's moving in on me here. I do have one unit that still just has Springfield muskets, the Highland Light Infantry. So they've got a bit of a disadvantage here. Uh, but the 101st, all the way back here with their long-range Mississippi rifles are already engaging. Since he's not attacking from this way, I can turn them to face them. Uh, Cameronians are here, and they're engaging as well. So Highland Light Infantry, despite their short range, has good protection on its flanks at the moment. So I think they'll be okay. I'm probably going to move some of this artillery and get them into a place where we can fight off this attack. But he may come at me from this side too, so I don't know. Let's watch and see what happens. I want to watch from this angle here so I can see what's happening over on the left at the same time. Here we go. Highland Light Infantry is now engaged. We need our Scottish boys to hold. Oh, that was actually really smart on his point, on his part. He turned, he sent his cavalry in there to get on the 101st flank so they couldn't engage over here and created a difficult situation for me, but uh, we're throwing them back pretty good, so I don't know what he's going to do here. But that definitely complicates the situation because now Bacon's Brigade could actually fire into the 101st flank if they want. I'm pretty worried at the moment about the Highland Light Infantry, but they're about to get their perk. We're going to give them Deadly Volley. Deadly Volley gets uh, resistance to high momentary casualties. Give a bonus to volley strength, and they level that up in short range engagements, which are in right now. But they're going to have to hold. It's going to be tough. He's coming at. He's coming right at this corner. So it's going to really come down to the 101st, the Highland Light Infantry, and the Cameroonians being able to hold. Right, Stockton was just wounded, so they've lost their commander now. So let's do this. Let's come out with the Arctic Angels and support these guys. I think we're about to win this thing because we're inflicting some pretty heavy casualties. But he's going to come pretty close to breaking the Highland Light Infantry. He just doesn't have enough support on his wings to be able to keep this going. Alright, we got him. Nice job, Scots. I think this thing's about to end, but we'll wait until it does before we take a look at the numbers. All right. So it looks like the Airborne Division, specifically the 82nd and 101st, did most of the killing. But also, among our Scots... Uh, 10th Hussars, Highland Light Infantry both did really well. Scottish Rifles did too. Uh, it's a major victory for us. That's a really nice one to have. Alright, so let's take a look at the Army of the Kanawha for a second. Seems to make sense that we would give Enfields to our Scottish units rather than Springfields. Uh, we do have to replace a wounded officer here. 
John Sedgwick's available. Let's throw him in there. I think maybe we can do better than Springfield Muscatoons. Enfield Muscatoons. Perfect. Let's make sure these guys all have. They do. Now, I want to actually make a change here. I want to change the Screaming Eagles over to... Actually, you know what? We'll keep the Mississippi Rifles for them. But any units that have Sharpshooter as their perk, I want to give them something good for long range. Uh, because they're going to they're gonna level that up by engaging at long range. So the more long range fire they can engage in, the better. But we're going to go ahead and wrap it up right there. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm just waiting to hear back from a couple of folks about their patron units. And then we will have all of them in. And then we can see what happens. Right now, let's take a look before we finish up. Just show the map with the front lines as they exist. Uh, so you can see here kind of a bulge in the line that we're going to need to deal with. So we'll need to deal with southeastern Kentucky, eastern Tennessee, western Virginia, and solidify things there. Uh, and we've got an issue up here. It looks like he's still got somebody. Looks like all of our units, for the most part, are in supply. We do have some supply issues in central Kentucky we're going to have to deal with. So, um, in fact, let's go ahead. He's only at, wow, 45% supply there. So we're going to have to build a couple of supply depots here in central Kentucky. Eventually I might want to build some telegraph too so I can issue orders a little quicker to my to my armies. But for now, let's worry about supply there. Army of Ohio is also kind of out of supply. It seems like they're okay at the moment, but I'm at least going to build one depot here. And we'll wrap it up right there. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below, and we'll see you again soon with another episode. Thanks for watching.